before, after. Before, after. <laughs> okay, stay tuned, guys. I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. What's up guys, it's Mike here from the Wall Street Image and today I'm here to show you how to take amateur pictures and make them look like professional quality pictures for your Instagram, your Facebook, or whatever social media you're gonna be using them for. Now, when I first got started with videography and photography, I was under the impression that you needed the latest and greatest gear to make your pictures look really, really good. But one thing that I did fail to realize is that if you learn some very great editing techniques, you can take some very basic photos and make them look very high quality. And to prove this, we're gonna take a very, very basic picture, take it on a low megapixel camera, and we're gonna put it in our editing software and see what we can do to enhance that picture. Now, the reason I'm using a JPEG instead of a raw photo to edit is because JPEGs typically have less information than raw photos, which means it's not gonna be as high resolution as a raw photo. But I'm gonna show you that with certain editing techniques, you can still take a low quality image and make it look a lot better. Now, let's jump over to the editing software and we're going to get started on this basic picture. All right, guys, so we have our photo pulled up in Affinity Photo, which is our uh, picture editor of choice, which is somewhat like Photoshop, so either one will do the trick. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go over here to our layers panel and we wanna duplicate this layer. So we're gonna do that by clicking Command J. And after we do that, we have a duplicate layer so that we're not editing on the actual photo. So if we go and we mess up something, we can always refer back to the beginning. With this new layer selected, if we're gonna go up to the top, we're gonna go over to filters and we're gonna scroll down to frequency separation. When we select frequency separation, you can see that um, actually separate the textures from the color. So our high frequency side has all of our textures. Our low frequency side has all of our color. And if you go down here to radius, if you would pull that all the way up, you'd see that on our high frequency side, it'll pull in all of the textures of this photo. Now, this is not a raw image. It's not a high quality image at all. Um, so the same still applies if you had a raw photo with a lot of detail in there, um, you would see a more drastic difference, but I'm just showing you from a beginner standpoint how you can make this photo look a little bit better. I wanna take it down to maybe 2.2. Feature protection tolerance, I'm just gonna leave that at default 50%. We're gonna click apply and also see that it separated our high frequency from our low frequency layer. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna select our low frequency layer. We're gonna go back up to filters and we're gonna go to Gaussian blur because what we're doing is we're retouching the skin to make it look a little bit more smooth, all right? So Gaussian blur. And as you can see, it put a blur on the entire photo. Her hair is blurred, her eyes are blurred, her lips are blurred, but we only want the skin to be blurred and nothing else. So the way that we're going to do that is first, we're gonna see how much blur do we actually want on this photo. If we take it all the way down, it's no blur. The more we take it up, it's a high blur. And we don't want that much blur on the skin. We just want it to be smooth. So let's do apply. So we've applied the blur and it's still blurring everything. So the way we're gonna counteract that is we're gonna go down to our mask and we're going to create a black mask and we're gonna hold down option and click mask, all right? And so what that's essentially done is that's hidden the blur. And so we can actually paint it back on the parts of the photo that we want. So we're gonna select our mask and we're gonna go over to our paintbrush tool and make sure that we're painting in white. Take the hardness down to zero. So you make sure the opacity is at 100%. We're going to begin to paint over the sections of her face that we want to be smooth. This is very, very pixelated because it's not a high quality image. One of the rules of thumb is not to go over dark spots or hard shadows because we don't want it to look unnatural. So for instance, down here around her nose, if I blur that, it makes it look more, more fake. Let's undo that. And I'm gonna speed this up a bit. Another thing you wanna be very careful with is not to blur connecting lines like the line on her neck, separating her neck from her chin. And by chance, if you happen to blur an area, um, 
that you see, you go back and you see, uh, I've learned her lips. What you can actually do is change this to black. And if you paint back over it in black, it'll actually remove some of the blur. Okay, also another rule of thumb is that if they have a beauty mark or something on their face that kind of identifies them, you don't wanna remove this because if it's a beauty mark, it's something that, you know, it's kind of unique to them. So you wanna kind of let that stay there. So the next thing you wanna do, you wanna right click. You're going to go down to merge visible layers. That gives you a new image with all of uh, the smoothing and the skin retouching that we've already done, all right? So the next thing that I like to do, I'm gonna duplicate this layer again, and I want to lighten up the eyes a little bit. So I'm gonna go over here to my Dodge Brush Tool, and the Dodge Brush Tool, what it basically does is it lightens dark areas, all right? So any area that you want to make brighter or you want it to stand out, because our eyes are like a feature that really identify her. I'm just going to hit those eyes. All right. And I click twice. And also I want to paint inside the whites of her eyes to make the white of her eyes lighter. Now you may not be able to tell a big difference, but if I turn off this layer, you can actually see how much different it looks. All right, and another thing, inside, when you can see that light in her eyes, that, that feeling light that's in her eyes from the flash, you can also brighten that up as well. Other things you can do is like the lips. So I'm gonna make that big. I'm gonna make those lips pink make them stand out all right so that's good to me now if I back up just a little bit this does not look the best it looks kind of fake she kind of looks like a Barbie all right still pretty but it doesn't look like a real person because of those those eyes and those lips being that color but one thing that I want to do to take that down is I can go over here to the opacity and I can just bring that down. So that's zero. That's where we started from. Maybe 15%, 25%, that should do it. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna merge these layers once again. In my develop tab, first thing I wanna go to is I wanna go to my tones and curves, all right? This is where the magic is really gonna happen now. Quick before and after without the curve. And that in and of itself has already made the photo go from, I would say, a, a 80 to a 90. Then the last thing that I would do is, here I'm gonna take my vibrance saturation up just a little bit. Saturation is going to change the entire photo. So when you're playing with saturation, it's gonna boost up the colors of everything in the photo. I don't wanna do that. Vibrance is going to take washed out colors and boost those up just a little bit. Like not the greens, but kind of the yellows. And, and I just wanna take the saturation up just maybe a little bit because I want that area in her dress to kind of stand out as well. Here we're just showing you a before and after of the final project before and after and there you have it guys taking a basic picture and making it look more professional not to say that you're going to be using these type of photos in your portfolio or even for a magazine or anything like that but the same process still applies that if you take a basic image you can use that image and if you know proper editing techniques you can make that picture look a lot better so if you enjoyed this video and if it's been at all helpful, make sure that you leave a like and in the comments, tell us if you've ever used any of these editing techniques while editing your photos and tell us what software you use to edit your photos. And if you like content like this, we're gonna be doing more in the future. So hit the notification bell and make sure that you subscribe so that you'll be updated whenever we post new videos. Again, guys, this is Mike from the Wall Street Image. Thanks so much for joining and we'll talk to you on 